All right, so in part three of our course, we've uh, learned various concepts of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and various concepts to publish a, a non-native universal mobile app. One of the big things that's important nowadays regarding any apps is data, data-driven apps. That's a big concept, because a static app that does some cool things but doesn't really store or retrieve data isn't as useful as it could be. Uh, every kind of app that you use nowadays basically has some sort of data-driven model. Let's say you're using Instagram or Twitter or any social network. You've got an account which has a lot of your data and then you look at the latest pictures, the latest videos, that's data being pulled from some source. Let's say then you want to post something on Facebook, that's your data, you're putting it on into the app, basically, into Facebook, that's data again. So data back and forth, either from a location to a location. Data-driven apps, that's, what, that's where it's at nowadays. So that requires some form of database. There's lots and lots and lots of databases out there. We can look up the Wikipedia article that I'm sure is 10 pages long that talks about all the databases out there. So we're going to focus on a kind of database, one of the modern concepts of databases that will integrate with our app pretty well. This is known as the NoSQL model. Let me just look at something here briefly. Uh, SQL, or SQL, is a popular schema for defining databases. And it works, it has worked well for decades, but now with the modern web and modern apps, that kind of database isn't as useful, a SQL database, because it requires a server. And so if we use something in the vein now known as NoSQL, 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 this concept of NoSQL is sort of the opposite. If you've got any experience in a database, it's probably a relational database in that you've got tables of information related to each other. NoSQL doesn't have that sort of concept where data relates to each other in the traditional way. It's still going to be a bunch of data saved like user information, product information, um, just any information that you can think of is going to be saved in this kind of database. It's just that it behaves differently than the traditional ones that you might have heard of before. Um, SQL, MySQL, ASP, Oracle, all of those classic kinds of databases, FoxPro, all of those classic kinds of databases. Um, this is different. It has a self-defined structure that we create as necessary. So it is structural, it's just not relational in that there's a, tata, a table that relates to another table. So I'm just, yes? It's not hierarchical database. No. Um, it's a very flat kind of database which works really well for many modern web apps and mobile apps. Um, but again, the right solution for the right task is always different for every task. And so th I'm just looking up here the, uh, the Wikipedia article on it, and it's interesting reading, and specifically the differences between classic relational databases and NoSQL databases. And it gives you a bunch of uh, examples, again, lots of pages of different kinds of databases to have a particular, to solve a particular problem. Um, what we're going to need in our in our in our app eventually is uh, for the user to save information, class information. They're going to be perhaps developing an educational plan, and they want to list classes that they want to take or classes that they have taken. So a class is going to be made up of various different fields. What's the name of the class? Who's the instructor of the class? What's the title of the class? You know, those are the fields of a record. I want to save this particular class that has all of these fields. It has these pieces of data. So that data can be saved in any kind of database. And we're going to be talking about a database uh, that is of, this, of the flavor NoSQL. Specifically, the one we're going to talk about is one called PouchDB. You'll see it listed here in the article, and it's related to CouchDB. CouchDB. 
there's a section types and examples. There's the column type, document type, key value type, graph, multi-model. So CouchDB falls into key value and the document model. CouchDB, uh, which is the parent, and then PouchDB, which is a variation, which is what we're going to do. The great thing about this kind of database is that it doesn't require a server. You can uh, create the database within the app, save the data within the app, and if you want to then replicate the data to a server, but it's not reliant on a server, which is always challenging to teach because if we don't have a server set up, we can't do anything. And just to set up a server and have all that infrastructure, that takes a while and stuff to learn about server management before we can even save data to the database. So we're using PouchDB, which doesn't require a server. The data will, will be persistent, so that means it, the app is installed onto the user's device, iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, etc., etc. It's going to be saved to the app, and if we go further, we can replicate that data to an external database. So that if someone then moves away from that, you know, from that particular last year's model phone to a new model phone, their data can follow them. So <clears throat> many of these NoSQL style of databases rely a lot on JSON, J-S-O-N, as a way to store their data. And JSON, the cool thing about it is that it is just a plain text kind of file in that it can save any key value pairs and any structure that we define. And um, this is what is uh, very common in most um, web applications and many kinds of uh, native apps, JSON. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is learn a little bit about JSON, how it works, its structure and syntax and such. We'll do a, an interesting, simple uh, kind of proof of concept example, see how that works, and then we'll segue into, now that we have those concepts, using PouchDB to create a database, store information, retrieve information, uh, change information, delete information, which is what any good database will do. So um, NoSQL isn't a particular name of a database, it's a concept of databases. And the article goes on to explain many detailed kind of NoSQL databases. If this doesn't quite make sense at the moment, don't worry, it should as we go on. If you've already got experience in some databases, um, you'll see uh, many of the concepts travel through and there will be new ones because things always change. So here's what we'll do. You should have copied the stuff from the network folder, at the very least the JSON practice one start folder. So I've got it on my desktop right here. Go ahead and open the JSON practice one start folder. It just has nine pictures. These nine pictures are going to be added to my uh, database, so to speak, and we're going to retrieve it. Let me show you the end result, which is in the end file. And I've got here an index file. Okay, um, if you would like to see the end result index file, you want to open it in Firefox for various reasons, just at the moment, trust me. But if you open the index HTML file in the end folder, you'll just see a simple button that says social media. I click on the button social media, it loaded up one of the icons, it has a link which is an active link. I click social media button again, it loads up a different icon and a different link. Every time you click, it's a random social network with a real link to a real profile. These are some examples of my own uh, social media profiles with a lot of uh, fun, interesting, silly things. And so what's happening here is randomly we are loading a social media profile. On the surface, this looks very, very basic. Behind the scenes, 
we are accessing JSON data, which is just for all intents and purposes at the moment, a very simple database. We're accessing a database which has a little bit of uh, related information. There's a picture, there's the text, Pinterest for example, and there's a link that goes to the website. So three pieces of information, very simple. Um, but this will be our proof of concept to learn some concepts of JSON and storing data in a flat database in a NoSQL database. So our end result is going to be in here, and notice you might have a keen eye, something over here. We'll get to that later, social.json. So in order for us to get to this point, I'm going to close that. You can look at it, of course, but in order to get to that point, we have this starting point here. Nine pictures, which we want to store in the database, along with other information, and then retrieve it when we click a button. Um, so what we'll do is... We'll go ahead and open um, Notepad++, just open it directly since we have no starting file. Open Notepad++, let's go to Save As. And I'm going to save it in the same folder as our start folder, JSON practice one start, and I will save it as. There's no save as type here, I believe. Java source, JavaScript, Java server. There's no JSON format here that I see, so we'll just call this um, JSON dash practice dot JSON. You might say normal text file, don't worry about it. Let's save it as whatever.json, JSON practice.json. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So we're going to create content based on the concepts of JavaScript, JavaScript Object Notation. And that's what a JSON file is. And a JSON file is a plain text file. It's not encoded in any special format at all. Um, it's not an HTML file, it's not a JavaScript file, it's plain text with that extension. But it's got a very specific syntax. So we'll just save our file. One thing to make a note of, there are no comments in a JSON file. The data in the JSON file is the data. There are no comments, unless you make a field for comments, but it doesn't quite make sense. So there's no comments. We're not going to add any HTML comment or JavaScript comment. There's no comments in a JSON file. And a JSON file always starts off with this syntax. Nothing at all, and then curly brace, close curly brace. Everything in the middle here will then define my data. And this will work as a key value pair. There's some sort of field and it has some sort of data, key value. The field is the key and then the value is the data. Um, we saw something similar <clears throat> conceptually with variables. We've got a variable called user and it has a value of victor. User is the key, victor is the value. It's a pair. It's a very simple concept. But here, we can store as many of these objects as we want, of these records, of these documents. So for example, I'll go back to line 2 and I'll tab. Uh, one thing is that the particular symbols that we use are very specific, but we can still use the tabs, keeping things on a single line and so forth. We could have everything here in one long line, but uh, what I'm doing here is using what I've done before in that I've got spaces and tabs and so forth. And so we need a key and a value pair. We always want to use double quotes. So let's say I do double quotes here, open, close, open, double quote, close, double quote. It cannot be single quotes. And I've got a key called location. I've got a field 
in my database called location. At the end of that, uh, we'll add a space and then a colon and then another space. The particular location, in quotes, San Francisco. This is almost as if we had var location equals San Francisco. At the end of the line, we'll add a comma and we'll press enter. The second field in my database, in quotes again, will be capacity. Let's say we're creating a um, database to store um, the locations of tech events that we're going to have throughout the country. One of the locations for this event is San Francisco. The capacity of attendees, let's say we can take 200 people in that particular venue. Next field, so we'll add a comma at the end, quotes booking. Are we still accepting bookings? Oh, actually, let me, well, let me finish this line and then we'll back up colon and then we'll write true. I didn't write it in quotes and actually I didn't want to write the 200 in quotes. Let's back up for that. Because this database can hold strings which are in quotes, so strings as we've seen before like names, you know, complete sentences and words, literals, literal things that we display on screen. San Francisco, it's in quotes. That's the, the, that's the literal string. The database can hold numbers. So I've got a number here, 200, which is technically different than the string 200, so it's not in quotes. Numbers, not in quotes. And then we can also hold um, Boolean values, which are true or false, and that is also not in quotes. You can hold some other kinds of objects. These are the big ones that we'll usually talk about. So strings, the names of things, numbers, which are numbers, and booleans, which are true or false. Only two values, true or false. This is the basic anatomy of a JSON file. It has one, uh, one object, basically, one record. In, in the database made out of these three pieces, location, capacity, booking. We can further extend this to be more complicated because I want to store more than one location and another location might have a capacity of 500 and another location maybe we're no, we're no longer accepting bookings. Maybe we've got 40 locations so we need to set up a structure here where we're going to save more than one more than one thing. This is going to be an example here. Uh, notice we've got location, this location, comma. Capacity, this capacity, comma. Booking, this booking, no comma. This is the syntax. This is the most basic and complete example of a JSON file. We've got the curly braces. We've got what's the name of the field, what's in the field, Co uh, colon in the middle, quotes when it needs to be a string, no quotes when it's a number or a boolean. And again, we cannot write comments here. It would be very nice for us to write a comment to explain that to ourselves. But the nature of this kind of file is that you cannot add con uh, you cannot add comments uh, unless we make for example a field called comments and in that field in quotes we write our comment uses curly braces key value pairs saves strings, numbers, 
Booleans. Is that how you spell it? Booleans? Booleans? Etc. Key values separated by colons. And then each pair separated by commas. No comma at the end of the series. So that's a long comment that I saved in the comments field in the key of this object. Everything within these curly braces is an object. JSON object notation. These are objects. The notation is JavaScript JSON. J-S-O-N. All right here. JSON. JavaScript object notation. Any questions so far? This can get very advanced very quickly because we can actually store objects inside of objects, which we'll do right now. So um, what I want to do actually this is an example of a very basic JSON file. I want to instead, now that I have the idea, okay, actually I'm going to need to store several locations and several capacities and several bookings and such. Now that I have that idea, I'm actually going to start over and create a different database with a different schema, a different, um, what's another word for schema, a different um, idiom, what's another word for idiom, a different um, structure, different structure. So uh, let's go to File New. Let's save that. I'm going to save it in the same same folder. We'll call this JSON Practice 2 dot JSON. JSON practice 2.json. Get the blank document again, which will start off the same as before. Open curly brace, close curly brace. We're going to have again a key and a value pair. But this time, we're going to get much more advanced because, as I said, I want to save several of these events, not just one. A moment ago, we saved one event the San Francisco event with 2,000 people. I want to save several in different cities. So we'll start off with, um, in quotes, event. This is going to be a list of all events. We'll call it events, plural. A list of all of the events that are available throughout the country as part of this tech conference series. Space, colon, space. Here's where we get pretty advanced right away. We're then going to use a square bracket, enter a couple of times, close square bracket. We didn't really get to it previously, but if you have any experience in any programming language, there's often the concept of an array. In short, you can think of an array as a variable full of variables, kind of. 
whereas normally we have the variable about username equals Victor, we could have uh, a variable called high scores. And high scores could list Victor and Janet and Bill and Will. It could list all of these people that got a high score. A bunch of variables in a variable. That's, in short, basically an array. An array is very is several several values in one value, several variables in one variable. And the syntax for that is square brackets. So that's coming from plain old JavaScript, plain old basic concepts of computer programming. So what we're about to do then is put many things inside of event. That's what I want to do with these many venues. So I'm putting many objects in this object. The event object will have many sub-objects, so to speak. And notice, it's still the same sort of syntax, key and value. Everything in the square brackets is tied to the key of events, the main variable name, so to speak. So within, within those curly braces, then we can have the same thing as the parent level of events, which is line 3, we'll start the curly brace again, and we'll close the curly brace again. We're about to put no more objects now inside of the object of events. It's going to be the same sort of syntax. Inside those curly braces, then we'll do what we did a little while ago. We'll create a field called location, space colon, San Francisco, comma. The next field was capacity, colon, uh, and then just the number, so not in quotes, 2,000. 2,000 people can come to that event, comma. Um, booking, are we still accepting bookings? Colon, true, it's either true or false, no string, comma. Comment, and at the moment we won't have any comment. Let me give you a moment to write that. I'll explain what we've got and then we'll go on. Be mindful of the syntax. Where do I have commas? Where do I not have commas? Open, open and closing brackets, square or curly. Be mindful of that. Okay, this looks very similar to what we did on the previous file, but now what we've got here is the ability to make more than one object of a location related to an event. So look at this. After, so on line 8, that closes this object here of this particular location. I want to list another location. So add a comma at the end of line 8, enter, and we'll create another object, exactly as before, with the same structure, the same schema as this one, meaning location, capacity, booking, comment. And then I just change the particular value as needed. So very important here, make sure you've got a comma after this object. Imagine all of this is one record in the database. All of these lines, these four lines, are one object in the database. Comma, what's the next one? it's going to use the same structure. Location, this time we're going to be in Seattle, comma. The capacity of that event, let's say it's 1,500. No quotes, because it's a number. Um, booking, yes, we're still booking, so true. Then we'll add a comma, a comment later. 
Notice even though we don't add any comment, we still want to create a field for it and leave it empty. Because we want to fill it in later. Let's add another location to the event. So another comma, because I'm adding another object, same syntax as before. Why not copy and paste? This time we're over in uh, Austin. And everything's bigger in Texas, so let's say this is 3,000 capacity. But booking now is false. No, accepting no more bookings to that event. Let's do one more. You think of one now. Add one more location. And I'm going to add a comma for the next object. So I added a fourth location, a fourth object, uses the same sort of syntax, open, close, curly braces, it's a complete object, it's a complete record in the database. It has the same fields, same, same keys, different values, key and value, it's an object, separated with commas. The very last one does not have a comma, it's the last one in the series. So this is also known as serialized data. It's in a series, it's in a sequence. First one, next one, next one, etc. So that goes back to the first key. All of this, all of these are values of the same key, events. Let's say now we want to com create, if you're used to older style databases, this is in a sense a sort of a table. Let's create another table with another different set of data. So one table could have certain sets of data, and another table can have different sets of data. And so I've got the uh, events table, and I want to create a new one. Let's say uh, users a list of the users that have registered and which event have they registered to. So this all still adheres to the same sort of syntax. Key, value, and then what's the next key and the next value. So this square bracket right here is the end of that value. So on line 27, add a comma, enter, and now we're going to create another key value pair. And we're going to create a, a value that is an array, which is a collection of objects. So line 28, we're going to create a, a, uh, a table uh, called attendees. This is going to be the list of attendees. Space colon space. Okay, let's list all of the attendees. It's going to be a lot of attendees. So open square bracket, close square bracket. It's going to be a collection of objects, a collection of data, variables in a variable. Inside of line 29, the first object, curly brace, 
closed curly brace. And here we get to make up a new structure. What would be some interesting or useful things to store that would be relevant to the people attending the conferences? Names. We can be as complex as first name, last name, etc. We'll just say names. So we'll call this names. Colon quotes Victor Campos. So I've got capital letters, I've got spaces and all of that, so okay within these quotes. All of these, I believe we can use capital letters here, but I'm just keeping it lowercase as we often have our variables with lowercase names. All the time we've written JavaScript and such, and HTML, it's all been lowercase, so that's why we're keeping this lowercase. But the actual value of that key, we can write whatever we want, and it would make sense to use capital letters and so forth. So we're going to be saving the names. Comma. What's another thing we want to save about the attendees? Any opinions? Company. What's that? Company. Yeah, their company, sure. So quote that. Company. What company are they coming from? In quotes, we'll say SDCE. Comma. Let's say we also want to save uh, which conference, which location they went to. So we'll call that conference. And we have San Francisco, Austin, Seattle, and Maui. Any one of those. So let's say Maui. Attending the Maui conference. And that's that's an object right there. That's a that's a record in this table. Th that's a um, that's a value in this key. So then we can do the same sort of syntax um, for another attendee. So comma begin another object. Same sort of structure. I'm just going to copy and paste. Same sort of structure. Names, company, conference. I'm going to say, Phoebe, what's your company? Phoebe, what's your company? Small one. <laughs> small one, okay. Small one. Which conference do you want to go to? San Francisco. San Francisco, okay. We'll make another one. Another object, separated with a comma. Lisa, what's your company? Lisa Co. Good. Which conference do you want to go to? Seattle. And so forth and so on. You see here, now we've got an attendees um, value with a bunch of keys, which are objects. And so I can go on and on. Here we're writing it manually. We are creating all of these, uh, all of these uh, values in the database. Obviously, with with some uh, with an algorithm, with some JavaScript. This would there would be there would then be a way to create as many as we want. Right now we're doing it the most basic way to learn the concept of JSON. Um, but here we can easily add as many more things as we want manually, and at a certain point it wouldn't be fun anymore. So we would use some algorithm to populate this for us. But we've created this structure, this complete JSON object, which is from line 1 to 45, the whole thing is one JSON object, and then we've got objects inside of objects. Events has these four objects, and attendees has these four, has these three objects. This key has these values, this key has those values. And it's all serialized data. 
Yes. Is there a way to have a front end interface where you can enter the data rather than going to this form? Definitely. Like a CMS? Yes, definitely. Once we've created this structure, then we can use JavaScript or PHP or any language, basically, to create the front end and some nice interface in the fields and submit, and it'll put it into it. Definitely. We're going to be getting to that, too. So, in short, this is the modern NoSQL type of database. It doesn't require a server. It doesn't require learning a complete... Uh, complex querying language. Um, it has its pros and cons, but one of the big pros is speed and interoperability in that you can use this relatively quickly or easily across multiple uh, projects, whereas if you had, let's say, an Oracle database, it can't be used by everything. If you had a MySQL database, it can't be used by everything. Um, sometimes you have to have to, a translator from one database to what your particular app can handle. Something like this, because it's self-defined, um, its structure is defined within itself, we can have just about any kind of parser, anything that will uh, convert it and use it as necessary. And again, it's, it's, it's very different from classic styles of databases, except that it stores data. It's just in a very kind of different way, in a plain text flat file. No relational aspect to it, but all the data is here. And as we will see, this will work really well for us when we get more advanced to save information about a class, retrieve information, update the information, delete the information, all the things that any database does. Save something, delete something, update something, retrieve something, those four operations. Every database does that in variations. That's what we want to do here. That's what we will do with our app in this in this month. Yes. Is there a con? You're saying pros and cons. What is the con that you wonder? One of the cons is, again, that because it's plain text and you're sort of responsible for it to for it to work. And I didn't type this comma right here. That would break the whole thing. What if I had two thousand lines here and I made a mistake early on? I've got. 1,999 lines that are bad. So it's a little too close to the metal. It's a little too like, you know, you're editing it yourself here, you can make big mistakes. Um, my book here mentions a couple of other cons I, off the top of my head. Let's see. Drawbacks. The syntax is not forgiving. A missed quote, comma, or colon can break the file. Because it's JavaScript, it can contain malicious content. Therefore, you should only use JSON that has been produced by trusted sources. So there could be a man in the middle of an attack where someone breaks into your server, they alter your database to add extra stuff to it, such as redirecting your traffic into your database to another database and steal user data. Um, so there's always pros and cons about everything, but for our purposes, it's going to work pretty well because our, our database is going to be within our app, within our Android phone itself. It won't be on a server that could be vulnerable unless we go that far to replicate the data. Yes? So, how about a, can a field be one of these elements be missing from one record? Let's say... Uh, uh, comments? Let's say you forget uh, to put in comments. And, and, and could, can there be an array within one of these fields? Like yeah. conference, maybe there's five different conferences or something. Yeah, can, very good point. Can, can, so can one of the records have an array in it? Yes. And the other's not? Mm -hmm. and, and can one record say, be missing the company, maybe a person's coming on their own? Unfortunately, so, yes to one, no to the other. You can have an array, you can have more objects in an object. You can go many levels deep, like Inception. So you can have here another object in the conference which would make sense because what if I do want to go to the San Francisco conference and the Maui conference? We can do that. Objects in objects in objects. As for missing one of these, that's not a good idea because it's serialized data. It assumes that all of the fields always exist. So when you try to retrieve something from the database on position 2, it's always going to assume position 2 is company. 
if you don't have a company field, suddenly it's conference and things don't work out. Okay. It would make it would make sense, but I suppose that's one of the drawbacks too. You want to, when you pull data out of it, you pull all the data. When you put data into it, you put all the data in. Perhaps not individual fields like we might in another database. So again, there's many ways to skin the digital cat. And uh, this is one way to save data in a database. Um, any questions so far? Yes. To be practical, this has to transmit to like a master or another database. Otherwise, it's your phone. Exactly. And when we get to the point of using PouchDB, we can do that exactly. PouchDB will have a variety of JavaScript commands. One of them, I believe, is simply dot replicate. And it will take whatever is in this local file and put it on a database, uh, on a server. So we will be able to synchronize the local version of the data with the mothership version of the data. That way we can have data um, persistence from one device when, I, when that old, when that terrible, clunky, one-year-old um, phone goes out of style and I get a brand new one, well, I can have that data follow me because I'm going to have it replicate and be able to follow me. Okay, so what we're going to do then is take a break in a moment. Um, this is the basic syntax of a JSON file of the kind of database that we're going to be working with. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to create then an HTML file to retrieve data, um, such as that social media information example. So different pictures, different links, different text. I want to uh, I want to make that uh, appear. I want to bring that out of the database and so forth uh, right after the break. 7.05. We'll come back at 7.15. If you would like to print uh, the syllabus or anything, I'm going to turn this printer back on and, and we'll print.